Fox 61 News at 10 starts now. That just proves how adamant we are about getting what we deserve. Now at 10, trading in their scrubs for picket signs, a local hospital in a labor crisis yet again. What it might mean for workers and for you. Plus, standing strong together, even in the rain, how the Bristol community once again came out to support their hero police officers with a raffle and fundraiser. And lacing up those sneakers, we'll tell you what worthy uh, cause turned Dunkin' Donuts Park purple today. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Matt Karen. We begin tonight with a labor crisis at a local hospital. Starting tomorrow, healthcare workers at Wyndham Hospital will trade in their scrubs for picket signs. They're going on strike for two days after union negotiations broke down. This comes after about 100 nurses in a different union went on strike last month for the same reason. Fox 61's Tony Black joins us in the studio with reaction from both workers and hospital officials. Tony. Yeah, Matt, nearly 250 employees at Wyndham Hospital will go on strike Monday morning for two days. They're not satisfied with how union negotiations with Hartford Healthcare have been going since December. The union president says it's time they take to the street. They feel disrespected by HHC. We're tired, exhausted. More Wyndham Hospital workers will go on strike Monday over union negotiations with the Hartford Healthcare Hospital. Nearly 100 nurses in Local 5041 went on strike in September, also because of negotiations. Now Local 5099 will march. Both unions have been in negotiations since December. President Heather Howlett says a strike was a difficult decision for the staff to make. I think the most frustration is is they they harp on these core values that they have of doing the right thing, doing the safe thing, and we just, we don't feel like that's happening. Nearly 250 technical and support staff like patient care technicians and kitchen staff are in this union, separate from the nurses union. Howlett says almost all are ready to strike. Their main reason is insurance. We have no guarantee on how much our insurance will actually go up. She says the hospital's offer costs the employees more out of pocket. The hospital is offering premium contribution relief, equaling an additional 2% of wages. Wages are another area they have yet to agree on. The hospital has presented more pay and market-based increases. However, the union president says those market-based rates only impact 88 of the 250 members. The reason we're walking out is because we feel that they're not being reasonable in us being able to take care of ourselves. Wyndham Hospital President Donna Hanley said in a statement, quote, a strike is not in anyone's best interest and will not help to resolve our negotiations. She said they have laid out a fair offer and have addressed the most important issues identified by the union. Quote, we have advised the union that we remain willing to consider proposals that are within the economic parameters of our offer. They have not presented such a proposal, she wrote. We would rather not be out there. We want to be in the hospital. I think it's a wake up call for Harvard Healthcare. I think they need to realize that they need to treat their staff better. The strike will start at seven Monday morning and last for two days. The nurses union will join them by picketing outside of their work shifts. The nurses union and the hospital have also not yet come to an agreement. In the studio, Tony Black, Fox 61 News. All right, Tony, thank you. Now we turn to the weather watch. Today wasn't a total washout, but it was hard to avoid those raindrops. Meteorologist Sam Samperi here now. And Sam, people should really keep that umbrella handy, at least for tomorrow, right? Uh, that's right. And even into Tuesday, uh, too, Matt, unfortunately. But again, it will not be a washout. Just a few showers here and there. We'll have a couple of bands. I'll time them out for you now. Uh, first band went earlier today. It started around 2, 3 o'clock in the... Yeah, we picked up a little bit of rain here, and now we're dealing with some scattered showers that are falling apart. Uh, there will be a lull in the action, but more rain off to the south now, and it's all moving up. We have an area of low pressure off the Carolina coastline, and it's going to be dominating our weather for the next uh, couple of days. Basically, we picked up upwards of two-tenths of an inch of rain right up the I-95 corridor and also in eastern Connecticut, Grant, New London, but that's really about it. Just a few scattered light sprinkles out western uh, Connecticut. High temperature today only held in the 50s and near 60. We're not really going to change the temperatures too much. We put this into motion. I am a bit concerned about tomorrow morning's rush hour as we get a band of rain moving up. Uh, it's dark. Uh, kids are out there. for the So for the bus stop, it's going to be a little wet. Uh, be careful out there. 
there overnight. Again, some showers and a little bit of steady rain developing uh, towards the morning rush hour. Uh, it'll be rainy and wet in the low 50s for the kiddos. And in the afternoon, kind of cloudy, maybe a shower, maybe a couple of rounds of showers again in the afternoon and evening, but more spotty with temperatures in the low 60s. Coming up, I will detail this week how much rain we will get by Wednesday and what you can expect right through the last few days of October. Matt? All right, thanks, Sam. New tonight, a car crash closed down a road in Berlin for hours. It was a single car accident involving one person. It closed Percival Avenue between Woodruff and Cole Lane for at least three hours. We've reached out to police to find out exactly what happened, but we do know that the driver of the mangled vehicle was taken to the hospital. Also new tonight, Hamden police have arrested two people they say were involved with the shooting that took place back in August. This happened on Manila Avenue. Police say Italese Casillas and uh, Jonathan Garcia Rodriguez were two of the multiple people that fired shots at each other on August 21st at about 1130 that night. One man was shot in the leg. Hamden police are expecting more arrests in this case. Also in Hamden this morning, police found a car crashed with bullet holes, but it had no drivers inside. There, here's what police know. Hamden PD were dispatched near Wooden Street and Rochefort Avenue at 245 this morning on a shots fired call. A white BMW was at the scene with no occupants, but there were multiple bullet holes. Police say they believe the car was targeted. They're still investigating and ask anybody with information to give them a call. Well, today, the Bristol community, torn apart by grief, continued the healing process. A local ice cream shop and a hair salon partnered to raise money for law enforcement charities in the name of Officer Alec Irado. In the wake of tragedy. Even though my heart is broken, I know they did what they loved, and that helps. And that helps. The community of Bristol standing strong together. Good is going to win out. It shows the love that the community has. It shows that even through tragedy, you know, people can work together, they can come together. Um, you know, Bristol sometimes is a little bit torn, but thank God that in a crisis like this, that we can all love each other, hug each other, and, you know, try to move forward. Even the rain didn't stop more than 500 people from turning out to donate to the Bristol Police Canine Unit and the Police Officer Heroes Fund, all in the name of Officer Alec Ayurado. I want to recognize him, you know. I know he doesn't want the recognition personally. He was here today, we had a nice chat, but to do it in his honor, that is the way to do it. The fundraiser was accompanied by raffles with all kinds of prizes, all thanks to Dunphy's Ice Cream and Undone Salon. It's nice to be together because it's been a really horrific time for everybody. It's, we all have heavy hearts and so it's, I think it's, a little therapeutic to be together. Um, this guy is a hero. Um, we have to do whatever we can to support him from not just now, but in the future. And we're told Officer Ayurado did show up at that fundraiser at some point today. Ayurado, of course, was the one who fired that miracle shot that took down the killer of Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte and Sergeant Alex Hamsey, who were laid to rest at a joint funeral at Rentschler Field in East Hartford on Friday. Organizers say they've raised over $27,000 for the canine fund. And that outpouring of support doesn't stop there. Glastonbury-based Barabo Jewelers and the Power to Be collection have created a commemorative thin blue line bracelet that you see here. This design features a power word like fearless or strong on a blue cord in order to show solidarity with law enforcement. 100% of the proceeds will go to the Bristol Police Heroes Fund supporting the families of those fallen officers. My husband's a police officer. I felt this was very close to home for us. And, um, you know, my family decided it's it's time to do something to help these families. There's a lot of people that want to do something for this, and they're just having a hard time right now. Anybody interested in buying a bracelet can find out more information on the links page of our website, fox61.com. Today, Dunkin' Donuts Park in Hartford was packed with people and packed with the color purple. Not for a baseball game, but rather a walk to raise awareness for domestic violence. It was the 14th annual walk organized by Interval House, a local organization dedicated to breaking the cycle of family and intimate partner violence. And Connecticut has logged some sobering statistics. 
This is an unbelievably big issue. Uh, the World Health Organization has called it a public health crisis, and the numbers are going up in Connecticut. 41,000 reported cases in Connecticut last year. We worked in Hartford and the surrounding region with over 6,800. So it's a big number, and it's important that we raise awareness about what it is, what the resources are, and how we can help. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. This year, the walk was named in honor of Jennifer Farber Dulos, the New Canaan mother of five who was killed in 2019. Her body was never found. And there was another walk that aimed to end domestic violence today as well, this one in Waterford. The Safe Futures annual 4K Safe Walk took place at the high school there. The event raised over $37,000, which will go toward the victims of domestic violence and prevention efforts. They were also joined side by side by the Waterford Police Department, who say they're proud to partner with such a good cause. A big day in Wallingford this morning with uh, the Tri-Circle Gala Brunch taking place for its fourth year in a row. It's an event that helps shine a light on the fact that recovery is possible for addicts. It includes multiple speakers, scholarship winners, awards, raffles, and giveaways. All proceeds going towards helping, the fund, helping to fund Tri-Circle, an organization that attendees say does essential work. An organization like Tri-Circle can't succeed without funding. Um, and we fulfill a very unique niche in the market of caring for people that are suffering from addiction. We're going to get, you can get through it. There's so many avenues and people, you know, you hear people constantly talking about how there's nowhere for addicts to go. And places like TriCircle and other places that connect with families are so important because once we have that connection and realize that there's a way out, it's, it's, the world is a beautiful place. And that event was hosted by our very own Fox 61's Keith McGilvray. All right, we